This week, tensions have increased in the Taiwan Strait, following incidents near an island involving the Chinese and Taiwanese Coast Guards. It's happening at a sensitive moment in between Taiwan's recent election and the upcoming inauguration of its new president. Nick Schifrin speaks to Taiwan's new representative in Washington for his first broadcast interview. More than any single issue, Taiwan has long been at the center of tension between the United States and Beijing. Last month, Taiwan elected Lai ching te known as William Lai, as president. It is an unprecedented third straight presidential victory for the Democratic Progressive Party, or DPP. Beijing calls Lai a separatist whose election could trigger war. But publicly, Lai has insisted his policy is to retain the status quo. To discuss these issues and the wider relations among Taiwan, China, and the U.S., we welcome Alexander Ta Yu, Taiwan's top diplomat to the United States. Thank you very much, Representative. Let's begin with some recent tension in the Strait. Uh, last week, two Chinese nationals died when their boat capsized while it was being chased uh, about one mile from the Taiwanese island of Kinmen. Today, Taiwan drove away a Chinese Coast Guard boat after yesterday the Chinese Coast Guard actually boarded a Taiwanese tourist boat. Right. What is your concern that these incidents could escalate? Well, we've always strived for status quo uh, in the Taiwan Straits. The incident that you just mentioned, it's uh, a concerning uh, trend that is happening. They are the ones who are changing the status quo by changing all these incidents. Uh, they, they talk about red lines, say, oh, you shouldn't cross the red line because this is a fundamental issue for, for the people of Republic of China. But they are the ones changing the red lines. They, they, they draw the red lines constantly on a different line. And, and that is a concerning trend, including the one in Kimin. There's uh, also diplomatic pressure. Uh, after the election, the Pacific island uh, of Nauru traded yes. its recognition of Taipei for sure. Beijing, uh, leaving you with only 12 diplomatic allies. That's 10 countries that have switched from Taipei to Beijing during the term of President Tsai. Why do you believe Taiwan is losing so much recognition? Well, um, on Nauru's case, it was mainland China's uh, punishment to the Taiwanese people for choosing the candidate uh, they did not like. Uh, but we will not go uh, challenge or go uh, race with mainland China uh, in the do on a dollar diplomacy. People Republic of China promises uh, these countries a lot of benefits, a, a windfall of, you know, um, economic benefits, airports, roadways, housing, etc. But in most of the cases, they go unanswered after they switch sides. Uh, Beijing has recently unilaterally adjusted a commercial flight path. Uh, exactly. I'm going to show uh, a, a map right here. Yes. Uh, closer to the median line in the Taiwan Strait, essentially normalizing the flight of Chinese civilian aircraft closer to Taiwan. Why is that so concerning to Taipei? Well, first of all, their, their, their measure was uh, unilateral, and they should have consulted with Taiwan. The way they consulted with Taiwan back in 2015 when M503 was established, it increased uh, dangers of, of, of national security for us because their, their planes are flying closer to Taiwan, but also increases uh, dangers for civilian uh, people, uh, civilian air routes because there is encroaching on our airspace, and they should have consulted with us first. I have a question about whether Taiwan trusts the United States. We looked at a, a poll that shows over the last few years, Taiwanese trust in the United States has dropped from 45 percent to 34 percent. And of course, we're all watching uh, where Congress has not been able to send aid, mostly to Ukraine, but also to Taiwan and Israel that the administration has promised. The leading rep Republican candidate uh, in the election, of course, is promising uh, or is vowing that he will not uh, stand by promises to NATO. Do you trust that in the future the U.S. will stand by uh, whatever promises it makes to Taiwan? Well, um, the recent uh, definition, whenever people talk about Taiwan-U.S. relations, the most often used term is rock solid. And I would say that the support that we, the Republic of China, Taiwan, we get from the United States is bipartisan. And it's, it's very uh, uh, heartwarming that the Congress has the last session passed over 60 resolutions or, or acts uh, in favor of Taiwan. United States who has, is having elections in November, and we, we, are, we, we are trustful that whoever wins the election, or the new administration, uh, this bipartisan support for Taiwan will continue to be. 
So uh, we trust that we will continue working closely with the U.S. administration as well as Congress so that uh, Taiwan can get, under circumstances, the best defense capabilities as possible. If Ukraine loses to Russia or forced to cede territory in some kind of negotiated settlement with Russia, would that embolden Xi Jinping to attack Taiwan? Uh, that's why the defense of Ukraine against the Russian invasion is very important, and the support from, from, from all like-minded countries to make sure that Ukraine is be able to defend itself is very important, because uh, facing aggression from authoritarian regimes and you speak about uh, appeasement, you speak about, uh, you know, the Crimea uh, incident in 2014, not much was done, so it, it emboldened the Russians to attack uh, U uh, Ukraine two, uh, two years uh, ago. Uh, but you see also, uh, you see the, the Chinese foreign minister, Wang Yi, it was in Munich not long ago. Security forum this weekend. Yeah, the, the security, and, and he, he, he mentioned about, if you want, peace and stability in the Taiwan Straits, then you should not cross our red lines. And then you should follow our One China principle and accept that Taiwan is part of us. And, and, and excuse me, this sounds very much like Munich in 1938, when Hitler said, you want peace and stability in my region, then, then cut Sudetenland is mine. Isn't it the same thing that they're saying? But besides, I'm, uh, as I said... Do you think the U.S. is uh, acting in the correct way to prevent war? Well, uh, we, we're very uh, hardened and uh, we, we are very um, appreciative that every time the U.S. leaders, as well as other leaders from the United States, from Japan, etc., they meet with the Chinese leadership, they, they warn, they, they appeal to the Chinese side, the, the insistence that peace and stability of, the China, uh, of Taiwan Strait is, is necessary, and they're against the unilateral, uh, uh, unilateral change of status quo by means of, uh, uh, by means of military aggression, no economic coercion. But they also assure Beijing that they will not support Taiwan independence and they will restrain Taiwan from any further action. People in Taiwan are not talking about independence nowadays. You go to Taiwan, nobody's talking about independence. Uh, again, Taiwan is, uh, the, the, our official name is the Republic of China. We are already a, a sovereign and independent nation. So there is no talk about independence because we already are. And again, as I mentioned in an, another occasion, if we talk about independence means that we are right now subordinate to some some other entity, which we are not. And President Tsai's uh, 2021 uh, National Day speech, she mentioned this four insistences. We will insist on rejecting any uh, attempt to encroach or annex Taiwan and the Republic of China, and the insistence that the future of ROC Taiwan will be determined by the people of Taiwan. And right. that's, that's the line that, that we follow, and that's the road that President Lai is also following. Representative Alexander Yu, thank you very much. It's a pleasure, sir.